On July 14th, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, held a national conference on the national security system. The secretary of the Political and Legal Affairs Committee, an organization that represents the CCP overseeing the country's intelligence, openly stated that individuals should place great importance on, care about, and support the work of the covert front. What difficulties is the CCP's covert front facing? At least two things have surfaced recently. First, on July 1st, the anniversary of the founding of the CCP, one of its top AI military experts, known as the Genius, was reportedly killed in a late-night traffic accident, prompting all kinds of speculation. The second is the leakage of Chinese rocket force information. A series of major incidents in the CCP's intelligence sector have directly jeopardized the combat effectiveness of the Chinese military. In this episode, we'll explore this topic. First, the sudden death of a military expert. It was released that an expert in AI and defense technology in the People's Liberation Army, PLA, known as the first chair of military AI, died at the age of 38 on July 1, 2023, due to a car accident while on a major mission. Mr. Feng's identity was very sensitive. Although his military rank, Colonel, didn't seem to be high, he engaged in research on smart planning and was the head of more than 10 projects. One of the top experts in the field of combining AI and weapons, he led a group called the Warbrain Group which focused on intelligent command systems. It's a key area of competition between the US and China on the war front, where AI is used to command the entire war, including tracking the coordination of weapons. How did this expert die? A truck ran him over in the middle of the night. This sounds like a joke and has led to much speculation. Some analysts have suggested that Mr. Fung may have been assassinated, like what happens in a James Bond movie. Let's have a look at the case first. On July 16, 2023, a member of the Great Translation Movement called Bin Xie tweeted a one-minute video saying, This is how Chinese military's top AI expert, Colonel Fung Yong He, was killed on July 1st. It seems to be a pure accident. Chinese official reports said that after attending an important meeting in Beijing, Feng was involved in a serious collision between a military sedan he was riding in and a cement truck. The driver was seriously injured and Feng died on the spot. Another version of the story circulating among the general public says that Feng was on his way to catch a flight to Beijing after working late. He was on his way out of the airport when he got into a car accident while riding in a DD or online taxi. Online videos and reports show that an eight-vehicle pileup did occur on Changchun Street in Beijing on July 1st at around 6 a.m. It can be seen that multiple vehicles were parked on the street in Beijing, including a bus, a private car, an online taxi, and a cement tanker. An ambulance was at the scene, as well as medical personnel. Parked vehicles were badly damaged. The road was covered with vehicle debris. One of the cars collided with the bus and the vehicle's body was completely shattered. Another car's front was crushed. A local resident on Weibo said the accident could be the worst vehicle accident in the history of Beijing and would shock the city, but in fact, it didn't make much of a splash. There was no official notification, hardly any media coverage, and video footage of the scene that circulated online was quickly deleted. A Twitter user claimed that the military bus involved in the accident was a special Toyota designed for leaders. So why is this fatal accident considered mysterious? According to Chinese official media, the Chinese Association for Artificial Intelligence, CAAI, posted an obituary on its official WeChat page on July 11th, saying Mr. Feng Yong He was 38 years old when he was killed at 2.35 a.m. on July 1, 2023, in Beijing while on a major mission. A memorial service will be held on the morning of July 15th at the Orchard Hall of the Bao Baoshan Funeral Hall in Beijing. Several Chinese media outlets reprinted the obituary. The obituary was published 10 days after Feng's death. Oddly enough, if you go through the CAAI's social media accounts like WeChat and Weibo and its official website, you won't find the original obituary. Screenshots of the original post, as quoted by other media outlets, are still available online. Apparently, the Institute has since deleted the information, not mentioning a single word about where, when or how the accident happened, but only emphasizing Feng's sacrifice and the line of duty. The word sacrifice is thought-provoking. As a military expert on a major mission, he could only take an online taxi without any protective measures in the middle of the night. 
He had no special vehicle from the military to drive him around. It has made people doubt the authenticity of the story. What kind of mission was he on, and why did he die in the early hours of the morning? All of this raises a lot of questions. By the morning of July 16th, the topic Fang Yang He sacrificed his life in the line of duty had received more than 130 million reads and tens of thousands of discussions on China's social media platform Weibo. Many netizens criticized the government for failing to protect talents in the field of national defense and security. It's heartbreaking. Such experts should be given a special escort, security, etc. It's a shame that the country's top talents have to take a taxi to carry out a major mission. The third and fourth tier entertainment stars are surrounded by bodyguards, assistants, and agents when traveling. I think it's ridiculous. At that hour, there are many vehicles waiting outside the nightclubs for their leaders. Fang's death is a huge loss to the CCP. According to public information, from 2011 to 2013, the National Defense Science and Technology University, NDSTU, sent Fang to the U.S. at public expense to study. He was jointly trained by the Department of Statistics at Harvard University and the High Performance Computing Laboratory at the University of Iowa, and worked as a part-time assistant researcher at the same time. After graduation, he returned to China. In June 2014, he graduated from NDSTU with a doctor's degree and stayed on as its teaching staff. The computerized military chess system, Warbrain, designed by Feng, was unrivaled in China and won the championship of the 2019 and 2020 National Military Chess Competition among 100,000 competitors. After that, Feng upgraded the system and launched Warbrain 2, which is even more powerful and intelligent with the input of various military parameters and machine learning functions. According to the Chinese media, Warbrain 2 is a highly intelligent command and control platform that can provide human commanders with the best operational plans and commands, utilizing scientific data to provide tactical decision-making support in wars. It can not only give action-level commands to aircraft, ships, and other entities, but also allows entities to complete mission-level commands such as patrolling, reconnaissance, and firefighting. After the upgrade, the entity is equipped with subjective initiative capable of automatically and flexibly enforcing the commands given by the intelligent body according to the battlefield situation, acting like a human being. It is also a super brain for military command and control, which can enhance the ability of different military branches to assist in combat and enable the five operational platforms of sea, land, air, space, and cyber to realize seamless communication and launch military operations in a coordinated and consistent manner. The media article also said that if Warbrain 2 were utilized on the battlefield, it could deduce the next move of the enemy based on their tactical strategy and thus gain an advantage. It's also considered to be one of the most important achievements made by the PLA in the field of military intelligence. Simply put, if a war breaks out, this system is the super brain of China's military. The unfortunate death of its creator means a heavy blow to its command system and a destructive blow to the further update of the system. As a result, it's natural that some analysts have speculated that perhaps foreign intelligence agencies participated in and planned the assassination. Others speculate that Feng could have been targeted and eliminated by one of his own. Since Xi Jinping came to power, he has carried out large-scale reforms of China's military system since 2015. In this process, he promoted, fostered, and installed people he trusted and took down or marginalized those he didn't. Given the various factions in the military, its dynamics become extremely complex and bizarre. The military is characterized by close ties between soldiers, as when one goes to war, he or she is entrusting their life in their fellow soldiers. It's the kind of trust that's life and death. This culture is especially evident in the Chinese military. Because of it, purging the army often leads to implication of others and spread in scope, and eventually evolves into internal distrust and wounds. So it can't be ruled out that Fang could be a victim of this complicated scheme in the PLA. How angry and frustrated do you think the CCP is? Let's look at this banner to get a sense of it. The banner reads, Tipping off secrets leads to jail time. Selling secrets leads to death. This is a banner hanging at the entrance of the Rocket Force Hospital in Beijing. In the past, this kind of slogan was usually more refined with wording such as guarding the nation's secrets, but now it goes straight to jail and death, showing a level of outrage and frustration. Let's talk about the leaks in China's Rocket Force. 
Since March 2023, the rocket force has been subjected to a rare purge due to leaks. Recently, three commanders, two deputy commanders, and a number of cadres at the military division level have fallen from grace consecutively. The Rocket Force's deputy commander was initially rumored to have died by suicide, but the military later changed the cause of his death to a cerebral hemorrhage. The current commander of the Rocket Force has also been taken away for investigation. It's rumored that the commander was taken directly from a conference room. A former defense minister is also under investigation. Overseas analysts have speculated that the secret was leaked by the son of the Rocket Force commander. He's a student in the U.S. As reported in a previous episode, on October 24, 2022, the China Aerospace Studies Institute CASI, at the U.S. Air University released a report on China's rocket force. The 255-page report reveals the organizational structure of the Chinese rocket force from its high-level command system to its back-end supply bases. Details include the addresses of the bases, the main functions of the units, the Chinese and English names of the persons in charge, and the numbers of the units, etc. The report includes a tree diagram showing the photos, names, and relationships among the various departments of the rocket force. It also includes a map of China showing the deployment of the rocket force in various parts of the country. The report even begins with a special section on how to decipher the unit's numbers. The Rocket Force is one of the CCP's most secretive units, so the leak couldn't have come from satellite photos. Such information isn't accessible to the grassroots soldiers either, as the military has its own confidential laws. I was shocked because I was under the impression that the Rocket Force was the most tightly guarded unit in the PLA. I thought that such comprehensive information couldn't have been obtained through satellite observation, nor could it have been acquired from ordinary personnel. The rocket force is a missile force. Their primary mission is to attack ground targets using medium and long-range missiles. It's part of a comprehensive nuclear deterrent capability with global reach. In the event of a conflict in the Taiwan Strait, this force would be on the front lines of the offensive, striking key targets on the ground, at sea, and on and around Taiwan. At the same time, it would also be the main target for the U.S. and Taiwan. From another perspective, the U.S. is not as concerned about China's army, navy, and air force, but it pays close attention to China's rocket force, including the Navy's strategic missiles and nuclear submarines. The U.S. dares not to slacken off even a little bit in guarding against this threat. If there is a war, the first thing the U.S. will attempt to do is destroy or neutralize the Chinese rocket forces, especially the strategic nuclear missile silos and nuclear submarine bases in Sanya. In comparison with other branches of the Chinese military, the prospect of conflict is quite terrifying for the men and officers of the rocket force, because they would be the top targets of U.S. surgical strikes on their positions. Yao Cheng, a former lieutenant colonel in the Chinese Navy Command, also said that the rocket force is reluctant to go to war on the one hand, but on the other hand is under pressure from Xi Jinping to be prepared for action. So, morale is shaky throughout the entire rocket force. Most of the commanders who are now in trouble have had second thoughts about Xi Jinping, he said. Well-positioned individuals in the rocket force have an incentive to leak information as it could be an effective way to stop the CCP from going to war and thus preserve the safety of the force's personnel. Another consideration is that since the rocket force is a specialized high-tech military unit with steep demands, Xi Jinping can't afford to choose its leadership based on their loyalty to him alone while ignoring their technical qualifications. This means a potential leak could happen. The U.S. military's release of intelligence on the rocket force is a deterrent strategy that tells the CCP, I know exactly what you're up to, this is a game you can't afford to play, and you won't win. This creates further blocks for Xi and his agenda. In our last episode, we reported on the disappearance of Xi Jinping's close confidant, China's foreign minister Ching Gong. He vanished from the public eye for more than a month. On July 25th, the CCP removed Cheng Gong from his post as foreign minister after a meeting of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress. Based on our research, it appears that the CCP's investigation of this matter has shifted to Qin's mistress, Fu Xiaotian. Authorities are looking into the national security risks behind her and how she got her hands on a large amount of wealth. Fu Xiaotian's background is complicated, with ties to several important men.
The organization that Fu allegedly served, Phoenix Satellite Television in Hong Kong, has already had several people taken away for investigation. In addition, Fu's case has already become politically charged, involving even a former member of the Standing Committee of the Politburo. This is in addition to Chen Gong, a deputy state-level official. If the rumor involving high-ranking officials at the state level is substantiated, there will be another major earthquake in the political arena of the CCP. It can be said that in terms of national security, Xi Jinping has been particularly troubled lately. On July 14th, the CCP held a meeting and asked the political and legal committees and the party committees at all levels and other relevant departments to attach great importance to and show concern for supporting the work of the covert front. According to CCP practices, it would emphasize something only after problems had arisen. Therefore, something has gone wrong with the CCP's intelligence work, and that is why it's now emphasizing the need to strengthen it. Covert front work refers to secret agents and espionage work. The CCP wants to strengthen its work in this area, so obviously something has gone wrong in this particular area. Ironically, the work of secret agents or spies is to remain secretive. By making public statements about such work in high profile, the CCP has instead stripped it of its covert nature. In addition, on July 20th and 21st, the CCP military held an all-military party building conference at which Xi Jinping's directives were read out, calling for resolving prominent issues such as upholding the party's absolute leadership of the military. In other words, Xi Jinping is in fact complaining that his subordinates aren't loyal enough to him as the party center. What we see is that there is a big change happening to both the CCP's military and intelligence agencies. In 1949, the CCP gained power in mainland China through a violent revolution, driving the Republic of China, ROC, to the island of Taiwan. During those revolutionary times, no matter if it were a military operation or the intelligence services, he or she who participated had ideals in mind. They fought for their ideals without being paid or even paying out of their own pockets or at the cost of their lives. They shared a dream to make China a better nation and bring the Chinese people a good life. Although this group of Chinese took the wrong path as they got deceived by the CCP's ideology and propaganda, we still consider them to have respectable intent. But the same can't be said of the present Chinese military and spies. Virtually no one believes in Marxism and Communism. Without faith, they have to rely on money or personal interests solely. So, they are very inefficient and the situation will grow increasingly chaotic. Party leader Xi Jinping seems to be unaware of this dramatic change. He can't solve the crisis in China with the slogans and rhetoric of the past, or with the mindset of the past.